Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is Emil. This channel I mostly talk about investing and investing in the stock market. So if that interests you, consider subscribing uh, if you like this video. And yeah, let's get straight into it. So this video is about Ron Barron. He's a founder of Barron Capital, and he's one of one of, if not my favorite investor of all time. So I think everyone kind of has their kind of style investor that they like to follow a lot of people like warren Buff buffett myself included or some people like ray dalio i think if you haven't heard of ron Barron, you should really really check him out there's a lot of very interesting interviews on youtube and where he kind of opens up about his investing philosophies and certain stocks and investments that he's interested in okay so in this video i'm going to go through his investment fund uh, Baron Capital, their portfolio, and uh, I'm going to go through the most interesting investments in it, and then I'm going to go through like the biggest ones by the amount of shares that they have in it, or the the value of their shares, and then finally stick around to the end because I think the most important thing is not the actual stock picks, it's the investing philosophy. So at the end, I'm going to go through his investing philosophy. So make sure you watch to the end. Um, so yeah, let's start off with the interesting ones that you may have heard of in his. Okay, so this is his uh, entire investments. So I just took like the top 15 and that these are the ones on the left here. And then the 45% is, he has like 380 different investments. So just that's what the other is. But I didn't obviously not going to put them all into this pie, pie chart. So yeah, his biggest one is CoStar Group. So yeah, let's just do it by the top ten. So I made this pie chart. So CoStar Group is the biggest, sixteen percent. Bell Resorts, Gartner. Um, and you see Tesla is actually a pretty large part of his portfolio. So let's go through his interesting investments now. So Ron Byron, kind of, I got introduced to him from him being. Uh, a, a major bull in Tesla, and he has been for many years. He even bought some when it IPO'd, like twenty dollars, and then sold it at forty. So he obviously regrets that. But uh, yeah, he got back on the board. Um. So yeah, let's. I'm just gonna play a clip with him talking about Tesla, and then I'll give you my thoughts about Tesla as well. So enjoy this clip. What have you thought as you've watched the stock go? Uh, up 80% from $400 and change to uh, this morning looking at $836 in the pre-market. Well, you got to remember that uh, 2014, when we were buying our stock, we bought a million six shares, an average price of $219. And as you know, since I've been on the show several times since, the stock went between 350 and 180 and 250 So it's all over. Um, and that period of time was when this company wasn't profitable, was expanding rapidly. They were being criticized by short sellers. Uh, it was very difficult for them to get started because uh, dealers would try to prevent them from selling cars in individual states. Um, but now things have all come together. And, uh, but in the period of time since 2014, the stock price didn't change very much through last summer. So through last summer, our $219 stock was 230 240 So we made 10%, 20%, 30%. At the same period of time, the company's business, we focus on business, not stock prices. The company's business had grown from $2.8 billion of annual revenues to $25 billion of annual revenues, eightfold. So the company's up eightfold, stock's up 20%, 10%. Now what's happening, this is just catch up. Now this year, Tesla is going to do somewhere around $32 billion of revenues. And I guess that they're going to do $100 billion of revenues within four years. And I think they have potential for a trillion dollars of revenues within 10 years. So basically, you're looking at the very start of what Tesla, what's going to happen with Tesla. This could be one of the largest companies in the whole world. A trillion dollars in revenue in 10 years? That's assuming you do 10 million cars. There's 90 million cars or 95 million cars that are sold. Yes. And that's without the battery business. So I'm thinking that it's seven, we're thinking $750 billion to a trillion dollars in revenues just on the car business. Elon says that the battery business is going to be as big as the car business. In addition to that, when I'm thinking about 10 million cars a year, the last com uh, conversation he had, he said it was 20 million cars is what he thinks he can do. And so what we're talking about is a business that right now, demand is overwhelming for the product that they're selling. And they're constrained as far as making as many cars as they could sell because they don't have enough batteries. Okay, so I hope you um, kind of got a feel for his investing philosophy and particularly in regards to Tesla. So as I mentioned, Ron Barron, he inve yeah, invested early on in Tesla and then sold. But then once he realized, okay, Tesla is for real, 
after he started getting really interested in it. He was buying heavily in the two hundred, three hundred dollar range for years, and you know the way Tesla. Uh, I'll pull up the chart of Tesla here. So Tesla was stuck in this range for many, many years, under two hundred. Then it kind of popped over two hundred. Then it was in the three hundreds. So he never really made any profits, like any substantial profits, for from what twenty thirteen to twenty eighteen. The whole time he was buying, nothing major. But he was happy, happy enough to hold, 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 and eventually, his conviction in Tesla paid off, and see, went up to nine hundred, and now it's five hundred because of the coronavirus. Okay, so yeah, he's not afraid to buy a company and wait for it if he knows that it will do extremely well in the future. If the stock price doesn't reflect how well it's doing, he he's happy to wait until it does because he knows it will. So. Uh, in for Tesla, in particular, some of the reasons that he explains in other interviews why he lo- loves the company. The price of a battery has been reducing for many years, and the price of creating a, an engine is increasing. So the price of Teslas are going down, and the value of Teslas are going up. Uh, so within ten years, I'm sure if you know anything about Tesla, you might know some of these points. But uh, if not, and I will probably make a video about Tesla soon, so stick around for that. If you want to hear that, please subscribe. And if you're enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate if you could drop me a like. This is probably the video I've put the most effort into, and there's a lot more information that I'm going to share with you. So thanks a million if you hit the like button there. Thanks. Okay, let's continue. Um. So yeah, most countries within 10 years, 15 years, Electric cars are going to be the only thing you're allowed to buy and sell. If it's a new car, you you'll probably be allowed allowed to buy old gasoline cars. But anyway, the the pressure to buy an EV will continue increasing. Uh, another thing that Tesla has going for them, gasoline car manufacturers like Ford or whoever, if they if they're not making a uh, a certain amount of electric cars in comparison to the ICE vehicles that they're making, internal combustion engine vehicles. And um, yeah, so like if they make a EV, they get credits and that's fine. If they don't produce enough EV, they must buy credits or as in like pay fines to the government or they can buy credits from Tesla because Tesla has all these extra credits because they're not making any ICE vehicles. So Tesla sells their extra credits to to Ford or to other ICE manufacturers. So Tesla is just basically getting free money for producing the cars that they produce. Yeah, so another thing Ron Barron likes to invest in companies that are doing the moral thing for the environment. Obviously Tesla's great. Ron Barron is really not afraid to invest in companies that are really breaking the norms and are really out of this world, quite literally. But um, Sorry for that dad joke. Uh, but yeah, he's really interested in growth companies that have crazy, uh, like you can't even imagine missions like these kind of companies here. Uh, his other interesting investment idea is Alibaba. So if you haven't heard of Alibaba, it's, it's a company that, say I want to manufacture, I don't know, um, fidget spinners, or I want to make a new product I can go onto Alibaba and find a manufacturer in China, send them my product details or send them like a 3D mock-up and the Chinese manufacturer will send me a sample. If I like it, then I get a thousand of them made and sent to my warehouse or 10,000, whatever. But it's like, it's the middleman between uh, Western businesses and Chinese manufacturers and everything that's made in China. If you don't didn't know that, like pretty much everything is made in China. Um, yeah, so it's a huge and still growing business. It's a huge business and it's still growing at a crazy rate. So I will probably make, uh, I am invested in Alibaba and Tesla myself and I'll probably make a video regarding those two. And I, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of AliExpress, you can buy like cheap little things on AliExpress and people use AliExpress to drop ship. Uh, so I'm not going to go through too much detail on this company right now because this is a really long video already so 
Now we'll just go through. So CoStar Group is his biggest investment. And I'm just going to go through these larger investments that I hadn't heard of before. So I'll just quickly go through them so you can kind of get an idea of the companies that he likes. And if any of these co companies, the idea of them interest you, maybe you can research them further. I'm not going to go through into detail in for any of them, but just if you want, you can skip Warren to get to his investing philosophy or Ron Barron's investing philosophy. Otherwise, I'll just quickly run through these. Okay, so CoStar Group, and um, basically they investigate real estate, commercial real estate opportunities. <clears throat> and you're basically subscribing for their information. They'll give you ideas on what cities have good investment opportunities for commercial real estate. So commercial real estate is a lot more expensive than normal real estate. So the price to rent a commercial space for a year is the same price to buy a household place, you know. So the, their customers are really have a lot of money. So these kind of companies that have a lot of like have customers that have a lot of money don't do don't tend to do too badly in economic downturns because the people who are most hit in economic downturns are people who don't have a lot of money. Um, so yeah, this is just what he said about CoStar, Ron Barron's uh, thoughts on CoStar Group. Um, nothing too in depth there. I'm not going to go through it. So Vale Resorts, this is like for skiing, a skiing uh, company. So they own uh, like different resorts around the world and they're in that industry of. So yes, yeah, so as you can see, like two of his top two investments are kind of real estate plays. And now his third one, Gartner. Uh, I haven't heard of any of these until I until I started researching it. But maybe if you're in America, you probably maybe have heard of some of these, but I don't I'm from Ireland, so I don't know these companies. Okay, so Gartner is a global research and advisory firm. So they, yeah, they research and advise big companies in relation to all these different sectors, rather than the companies having to have their own department to look after each of these sectors, Gartner does it for you. IDEX, so this company is looking after pets and animals on farms. So they have products and services that that help animals do well, you know, keep them healthy. Art Capital, that's in the insurance space, kind of insures um, kind of riskier in insurances or insurances that aren't so standard, like insurances that people don't know so much about. Fact sets, like financial data, kind of like Gartner, except just for investments and uh, yeah, I spent investment opportunities and they have computer research uh, data that they sell. So if you want to look further into any of those investments, there's just a little information that you can take with you if any of them interest you. Um, so now let's finish with Ron Barron's investing style. So as I mentioned before, he likes to invest in growth companies and he's really about the long term. He he started out as he was invest he was just researching for big investors. He was just doing the research for them and advising them whether to buy and sell certain positions. And then he realized he had been like finding all these great investing opportunities and just taking commission for giving the information to investment companies. But then he realized if he had just bought these companies that he researched, he would have done a lot bought and hold them. He would have done so much better than the 10 years that he was doing that. So now that's what he's doing. He's just finding these disruptive growth companies, buying them and holding them. And he doesn't, he doesn't care how big the company is. All he cares is the quality of the company. So he invests in small cap and large cap. The size doesn't matter at all. And he likes to bet on people. So if there's a really great CEO with a great vision and they, he's much more likely to invest in that kind of company that really has someone who's, you know, 
breaking the fold of things like Elon Musk. Um, yeah, so he's buying in businesses that can double in value, to, value and hold them, buy and hold now. So, and he just explains t- technology is making companies grow faster and there's not a, such a big uh, requisite for capital now. You can start a company with much lower sums of capital. And technology is allowing companies to grow much faster. So it's a really good time to just always be investing in stocks. It's always getting better and better. And he says, like, what I agree with, most people should invest in index funds unless you're really passionate about investing in individual stocks and you love doing it. You probably should just be investing in index funds or the majority of your portfolio should be in index funds. And he likes to look at the past PE ratio of the S&P 500. So I just pulled that up here um, to determine whether the stock market is under or overpriced. So this is the historical PE ratio. The, the coronavirus situation hasn't really been taken into effect just yet in this chart because we haven't really got the earnings results from this quarter. It's only been a month since the coronavirus has come out, so we won't see that straight away. But yeah, anytime the stock market's PE ratio gets under 20, like this uh, opportunity here, it's usually a good time to buy. And any time it goes over 30, really a good time to start selling. Or even over 20, if you want to get out of the stock market, maybe wait until the stock market goes over 20. We had this little dip in 2018, where that was a good buying opportunity for the short term. But obviously now it's probably crashed. Although the earnings at the moment probably won't be that good. So the PE ratio will still be quite high. Even if the stock prices go down, the earnings have also gone down, gone down. So the price to earnings ratio will remain the same, maybe. And um, yeah, so that's everything I wanted to say about Ron Barron. I put a lot of effort into this video, so I'd really appreciate it if you drop me a like. And just before you go, if there's any stocks you want me to um, research, any from this video or any at all, please let me know in the comments, and I will do it because I don't have a huge amount of subscribers yet so i'm more than happy to research a company for you so yeah thank you so much for watching and i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video cheers goodbye